Hello. So in this video, I am going to solve an example of determining a unit hydrograph. I'm going to go through all of the steps. You can follow along with this example in the handout available on Camino in the Google Doc. So here's the example. We have a rainstorm. It's shown as a bar chart um, on the figure. So you can see the first hour from zero to one, it rained four centimeters, and then three centimeters, and then one centimeter, and then half a centimeter. And the rainstorm fell over 182 square kilometer watershed, produced the response shown on the plot, and we also have the data. We are going to assume a base flow of 15 cubic meters per second, and we are going to determine the T hour unit hydrograph. As part of this, we will find that duration, but right now it's unknown. So our first step is to separate the base flow to determine the direct runoff. So in this case, we were given in our problem statement what the base flow was, it's 15 CMS. So we can go ahead and fill in this chart quite easily. But there are other methods to estimate base flow, which I encourage you to look back in the textbooks and on Camino at the other videos and document I posted on the other method, methods for estimating base flow. In this case, we were told that the base flow was 15 CMS. And so we can go ahead and fill in this chart, this table, by just writing in, or you can see how easy this might be to do in Google Sheets or in Excel. And we're just going to put in the 15 CMS base flow for the entire duration of the runoff. So to determine the direct runoff, we take the runoff and subtract off the base flow. So this first time period at 10 a.m., we had a runoff measured in the stream of 15 CMS. We needed to take out 15 CMS for the direct runoff for the base flow. So we have a runoff of zero. Okay. And in the second hour, we had 178 ups observed. And so we're going to subtract out 15 and get 163 CMS. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this table and encourage you to do the same. All right, so there is the direct runoff, which is just, again, the runoff minus the base flow. And we are now done with that first step, and we can move on to the second step. And the second step is to find the volume of that direct runoff and convert it to a depth over the watershed. And so the approach we are going to do to accomplish this is to, to take and sum up the direct runoff, which will be in CMS, and then convert that to a depth, just like we've done many times for total rainfall. So if I took that, in to that total column of direct runoff and summed it all up, we would get a runoff of 2,000 529 cubic meters per second. We would like to convert this to a total volume. And so I'm going to do this by taking that 2,529 cubic meters per second and first converting it into a time base of an hour. And so if you do this, you will get 9104400 meters cubed. So I'm going to do a little mental manipulation math here and convert that to 9.1044 kilometers squared times meter. And I did that because my watershed uh, area was given in square kilometers. So then I can easily convert this total runoff volume into a depth of rain by taking the 9.1044 kilometers squared per meter, dividing by that 182 squared kilometers, which gives us a depth of 0 
0.050024 meters, which is 5.0 centimeters. Isn't it amazing how that worked out to exactly 5 centimeters? It's just a miracle. So my rainstorm led to a depth of 5 centimeters of rain. Okay, so this is a particular storm where I was able to measure the rainfall coming in and the storm runoff in a stream, a gauge stream coming out. And so to convert that to a unit hydrograph, what I want to do is make it represent a depth of one centimeter falling on the watershed. And so to get from five centimeters to one centimeter, what I need to do is I need to divide by five or multiply by one over five, right? So I am going to take each of my direct runoff, and the next step I'm going to take each of my direct runoff values and divide it by five. Okay, so we're going to do that on this table. And again, just to repeat what I'm going to do, my direct runoff divided by five is going to be equal to my unit hydrograph. So easy first one, zero divided by five is zero. Okay. The next one, 163 divided by 5 is going to be 32.6 CMS. So I'm going to continue this for the entire table. So my next entry is 83.2 CMS. So I'm going to stop this, fill in the rest of the table, and I encourage you to calculate these for yourself as well. Okay, so here's that table filled in. And we can do a quick check to make sure that our numbers are right. And the best way to do that is to actually kind of repeat what we did in the last step. Just take the sum of your unit hydrograph values. If you do that, you should get about 505.8 cubic meters per second. This gives a total volume over the watershed of 1820880 cubic meters, which is 1.81 kilometers squared per meter, which if you again divide by the area of the watershed leads to one centimeter, which is exactly what we want. And now we have a unit of rainfall. So we're close to it. We're right at that unit hydrograph. All right, our last step, we want to find the time base of this unit hydrograph. We want the duration, okay? So right now it's just, we called it a T star, but we want to figure out that duration. And so we have to figure out how long we had rainfall excess, okay? So we want that unit of rainfall, that one centimeter. We want to see how long it took to get that one centimeter once we take away all of the um, infiltration and other abstractions and losses. And so to do that, we're going to take a close look at that Hayato graph which is shown in the, by the purple bar charts here. And so from this, we had first four centimeters of rain, then three, then one centimeter rain, and then 0.5 centimeter rain, each of those for one hour. So our total rain here was 8.5 centimeters of rain. We know from our previous steps that the total runoff that we observed from this storm was five centimeters. So that means that in the four hours, we had a loss of 3.5 centimeters of water in those four hours, okay? So just like we did when we first started talking about infiltration, we're gonna use the fee method here and just try and guess. So that three and a half centimeters in four hours is 0.75 centimeters per hour. So if we use that as a fee or a loss, does that lead us to five centimeters total of runoff? Let's look at a table of data to figure that out. All right, so I have this table where I'm going to show the time, which is an hour from, for example, zero to one, the rainfall in centimeters per hour, the fee, and then the runoff. Okay, so in that first hour from zero to one, we had four centimeters of rain. We're estimating a loss of 0.875 centimeters per hour. 
leading to a runoff of 3.125. All right, so remember in that, that last hour, that three to four, we had less rain than the amount that could infiltrate, so we had no runoff. If we sum up all these runoffs, we will get a total of 5.375 centimeters of runoff. This is greater than what we observed, the five centimeters. So our fee needs to be a little bit bigger, okay? So let's try a new fee. Let's try a fee of one and see what happens. So now I've assumed a fee of one centimeters per hour, which now I'm showing the runoff again here on the right-hand side. In that first hour, I'll have three centimeters. The second hour, two centimeters. And then in the second and third hour, no runoff. And you can see here that now my sum of the rainfall that becomes runoff is five centimeters, which matches what I observe in the stream flow. So this suggests that the rainfall excess occurred in two hours. Okay, so that rainfall excess occurred in two hours, which means that this unit hydrograph is a two hour hydrograph. Okay, so if we go back to that problem statement, we would call this a two hour unit hydrograph. And this becomes really important when we apply the unit hydrograph to different storms. All right, so that's the end of the example. I just wanted to talk about a few limitations in using unit hydrographs. So the first one is that storms should be uniformly, should be uniform both spatially and temporally. Okay, so you need to be a pretty uniform rainfall and that uniform rainfall needs to be uh, spread evenly through the, throughout the watershed. The watershed should be between one and 100 square miles in area. Okay, so not too big and also not too small. Too small, you'll just use the rational method. The direct runoff should be 0.5 to two inches for the storm. And when you're actually creating these unit hydrographs, you wanna use several storms to get an average response. And you also need a different unit hydrograph for every duration storm. Okay, and we will talk about that um, moving forward as well. All right, so that's the end of this. Um, I'll do some a bigger problem solving session in a, in a live Zoom later this week.